Wowzers! It sounds like someone's in trouble. Come on, Gecko, get your gear on. We've got a job. All of the important stuff we need to know about the rescue comes through on this piece of paper. OK, all three appliances, mechanicals stuck at height in limb. Oh, no. It sounds like the mechanicals are in trouble. We'd better go and rescue them. Now that we've got our kit on, it's time to move out. Oh dear, it looks like those silly mechanicals are stuck at the top of that tower and can't get down. We'll have to use the ladder to go all the way up there and get them. Look at this amazing teamwork. The crew all work together to get this ladder up as quickly and as safely as possible. Oh dear, it looks like the ladder isn't quite high enough to reach the mechanicals. Hmm, now, what can we use instead? That's right, bring in the help! To make sure the help doesn't wobble, Andy and James use these controls to move these things called jacks out of the side of the truck. They look like metal legs, and they stick out and lift the truck off the ground. Wow! That's really heavy, but these jacks are so strong, they stop the Alp from falling over. Whoa, look at that! It's got super strength, like super mechanical. Once the Alp is stable, which means it won't wobble, Andy jumps into the operating seat. That's the one that works the machinery. James is so brave. Look, he's going up in the cage to rescue the mechanicals. Now, because he's going up very high, he clips himself on using this harness, so he can't fall off. A harness is a bit like a belt you wear around your trousers. When you fasten it, your trousers don't fall down. OK, here goes. Up, 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 up into the sky! James is now in control of the cage, and he can move up, down, left, and right with these joysticks. Almost there. Hold on, mechanicals. We're coming to save you. Gotcha. Phew. I'm glad those mechanicals are safe. Thanks, James and Andy. OK, Mechanicals, I hope you learnt your lesson there. You shouldn't be climbing up towers and being silly, because we've got other people to rescue, OK? I've loved spending time with the firefighters and the amazing fire trucks today. Let's say a big thank you to all the crew here at Lim Fire Station for teaching us all about their awesome trucks. Hello, everyone. I'm spending the day with a real ambulance today. We're going to be having a look inside, then going out on the road with the ambulance crew. 
and visiting a special garage just for ambulances. Ambulances are one of the most important vehicles on the road. They're used to pick up people who are poorly or who've hurt themselves and get them to hospital as quickly as possible. An ambulance really is like a mini hospital on wheels. Everything in the back is here to treat people on the way to hospital. Let's meet the ambulance crew. This is Terry, the emergency medical technician and he's just checking the ambulance to make sure everything's working properly before call out. And this is Paul, the paramedic. Paul decides how to help the poorly person on the way to the hospital and can give them special medicine. Paul lowers this special ramp by pressing a button. The ramp makes it easier to get patients on board the ambulance. If a patient needs to lie down, Paul and Terry will use this stretcher. They can then wheel the patient up the ramp and into the back of the ambulance. These special seats can fold out so that someone from the patient's family can stay with them on the way to hospital. Paul, the paramedic, can use all of this medicine and these amazing tools to make people feel better. There's also a special hatch okay. so that Paul and Terry can talk to each other. Over the radio, the crew have received a real call out. It's time to go to work. When a call comes in, it's time for Paul and Terry to turn the lights on and drive quickly to their patient. That means they're even allowed to drive through red lights. Paul and Terry's aim is always to get the patient to hospital as quickly and safely as possible. The crew and their vehicles work really, really hard, with these ambulances doing hundreds of miles a day. This also means that sometimes things can break. But luckily, a garage has been built specially for fixing ambulances. Have you ever seen so many ambulances in one place? The expert mechanics in this amazing workshop can fix around 25 ambulances a day. Hey, what was that? Blue Mechanical! How on earth did you get in here? You better stay out of trouble. It looks like there's something wrong with one of the flashing lights on this ambulance. So it's up to Tim the Mechanic to fix the problem. There, that's better. Good as new. We can't have an ambulance without flashing lights, can we? After travelling hundreds of miles, ambulances can also get very dirty, so this is where they're given a good wash. Blue Mechanical, you better watch you don't get wet. Uh-oh, too late. Thanks very much to Paul, Terry and the whole team at the Northwest Ambulance Service for teaching us about the important service that you provide. Bye! Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night. And it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. 
Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water. And it even has its own air supply, just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. Then, it's out to the helicopter to fly! On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator, and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process, from call to flight, takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start. Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa, I can hardly stay on my feet. Red Mechanical. Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills using a dummy instead of a real person. The pilots skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done team! Back at base the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 Search and Rescue Helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps. And the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. And as you can see, as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera, which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself, and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely, and the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here, down through the ramp itself, off the aircraft, into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay, this is the cockpit of the helicopter. There are two pilots, one sits here in this chair, and the other one sits on the other side. These are the controls to fly the helicopter. This one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards 
and this one moves it up and down and then there's two pedals down on the floor as well and that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens and then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. Thanks very much to the amazing team here at the Coast Guard base. Bye!